The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. I got a five minute chart of the SPs up here, and you can see the action overnight. We roll over just below where we were at about 1 p.m. Eastern Time yesterday. That low yesterday in the market, you're talking about 5,067. You get down to about 5,065 between about 4.30 and 5.30 Eastern time. We're just off those highs a bit, still negative by about 16 points or a third of percent in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by about 90 points. That's about a half a percent decline, 17,932. All the markets taking a little bit of a breather this morning. The Dow off by 115 points. 38,900 on the dot in the Russell after quite an acceleration yesterday up to 2062. We're back about 15 points or seven tenths percent in the red right now for the Russell. Trading right now at 2045. Excuse me. How about Bitcoin, man? It's not stopping, right? 61,225. You talk about it, man. Uh, folks, we're up 10,000 bucks from where we were Monday morning. You're up almost 20% from where Bitcoin was at Monday. You put things on a daily for Bitcoin, whew, you talk about it, man. Now, potentially an A to B, C to D here, and you are pushing levels where you're almost crushing past where that A to B, C to D would be completed, and pretty remarkable. That's what the market's done. We've been talking about these A to B, C to Ds in the market. I'll give you a quick example on the S&P. You back things up on a weekly, okay? But this is a different A to B, C to D. This one that I'm looking at in Bitcoin, your A point was around the October low. Let's do this for a second here. We'll jump over here and we'll put it back on the daily. This is somewhat your A to B, C to D in the market potentially, okay? 4,100 or so up to about 4,800. You're talking about 675 points almost for an A to B, C to D. That would bring you, man, up to 5,300 and change or something in the S&P. You jump back to Bitcoin. And you see the run starting at about 26 to 27,000. You make your B point up here at about 47,500. So what are you talking about? Almost 20,000, the run. And we just got to it, which is pretty remarkable in terms of you pull back. And where is that pullback on a Fibonacci? Yeah, right to about the 382 from those highs. Now, on a longer term basis, all time highs hanging out there. You got to put it on a monthly to get both of them at this point. You got a high of 65,520 from April of 2021. Remember, that's exactly when Coinbase went public. OK, and then you just got above that high 69,355 before the market fell apart. And we are right back to those levels and look at the month that we have had in February, folks. It dwarfs anything else on this chart, okay? Look at this bar. It's the biggest green bar on a monthly basis in the history of Bitcoin futures trading and that goes back to the year 2017, okay? This bar is practically all green. You opened at 42.9, you're gonna close at almost the tick high is where we sit right now, up $3,700, man, um, bumping up against this area in terms of all-time highs at 61.3. Pretty remarkable. Spot Bitcoin ETFs go public, and we got the biggest monthly gain that we've seen yet uh, in terms of Bitcoin. All right, back to a short-term time frame. Five-minute charts. We jump down to crude. It's continuing to rise. We're pushing almost $80, $79.21 is the price right now. You were just trading at $78. You take a look at that on a daily basis. You're talking about highs of $79.29 made back at the end of January. So we just made a high of $79.34. So just above that high, we'll see how we react today. We got a few days left of the week. Uh, tomorrow, leap day, final trading day of the year, February 20, uh, excuse me, the month. February 29th, March 1st kicks things off on Friday. And yeah, we're just above that high and we're pushing $80. We're going to talk to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour. We always talk some Forex. We talk some yields. We talk some currencies, of course, Forex. Uh, we talk some crude as well. We'll talk to Teddy at 40 past. We talk to our man Kevin Hinks after the first break coming up at about 9.15 this morning. All right, we jump to notes and bonds. 
back to a short-term chart. Just chopping around of yesterday's action, kind of currently where we sit. And you're talking about right now a 10-year that is positive by four ticks, 110.05. And you're talking about a 10-year yield sitting pretty much right at about 4.3%, the yield on the 10-year, 4.3% on the 10-year. We jump over to the dollar index, DXY. Little volatility, right? Up to 104.24. We're sitting at 104.04 right now. You take a look at the dollar on a daily, just chopping around at this 50% retracement line right now. You jump over to the gold contract. And yeah, you're going to get some volatility when you have some currency action like we're getting in the dollar. Gold trading at 2044. We were at 2034 this morning. And yeah, that's a, in correlation to the dollar backing off a bit. But it is interesting in terms of just look where we were at about noon Eastern time yesterday, right? Dollar's trading at 103.75. So we've strengthened a bit. And you go back to the gold contract. And we're basically right back to where you were around that time. Nonetheless, little volatility, gold chopping around at about 2044 this morning, off of the lows of 2035. But on a daily basis, you take a look at gold. We're just in a little bit of a range that we've been in for some time. Between about 2000 and 2100, you're right in the middle of that range right now, trading at 2044. We jump over to the VIX, the volatility index, rising a bit. With a negative market, but all things considered, still under 14. VIX sitting at 1374 this morning. And where do we kick things off? So we got about 24 hours until we get PCE, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, out tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. That's going to be an important one, to put it lightly. And, uh, yeah, we go from there. Next Fed meeting, March 20th. You're talking about three weeks from today. The next Fed meeting, March 20th. Put it on your calendar. It's my birthday as well. Uh, as this market drifts a little bit lower this morning, off by 18 points. We check around to some of the stocks in the Magnificent Seven. Apple yesterday getting some headlines. They're not producing electric vehicles anymore. They end that endeavor. Billions of dollars, 10 years, um, 2,000 people in that special project that they were working on. And there'll be some layoffs. Everyone's getting transferred that's not getting laid off, and uh, they're getting transferred to generative AI. Yeah, it's, that's where they push forward, man. No more going into electric vehicles when it seems like electric vehicles. No one's even buying them anymore. Just look at the chart of Rivian for an example of that one, folks, because that's what the electric vehicle market looks like right now with Rivian making all-time lows on their numbers. Was it this week? No, it was last week. And look at that. You make an all-time low, I guess, on the Monday print. Just off of those lows, though, of 11 bucks. Be careful on Rivian, man. They're selling the same amount of cars this year as they're going to sell last year, which is like 50,000 cars. That's a tough one, where they are in their growth cycle, to be doing that. You jump over to Tesla shares this morning. Tesla, they're going to be up about 40 pennies at 215. We jump over to Microsoft shares this morning, pre-market. Microsoft, slightly in the red with the NASDAQ 100, down by about 100 points. You got Microsoft down about 75 pennies. You jump over to Meta shares. Meta down about four dollars to four eighty three forty six. We jumped to Netflix shares this morning, backing off a bit. You jump over to Disney. Disney shares backing off a bit as well. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hinks from Schwab Network Fast Market. We'll talk some markets, of course. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off about 17 points right now. That's about a third of percent in the red. NASDAQ 100 off by 93. Dow off by 138. To talk about some of the market action this morning, folks, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, right here from the Schwab Network, Fast Market with your hosts, Kevin Hinks and Tom White. Check out the program, folks. We got action. Uh, and let's just jump into it. Kevin Hinks, this market hanging a little tough, but we got a little bit of red on the board this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. Yeah, uh, so the data, a little interesting. GDP data showed, you know, the the headline numbers of back quarter over quarter going from 3.3 to 3.2. Personal consumption expenditures going from 2.8 to 3. Those aren't earth-shattering numbers. But if you dig into the data here on GDP, there's a couple of alarming things. That's why bonds rallied. And maybe the market was down before that, but it stayed down. Current Personal income down 5.4 in uh, these are all revisions to last month. 219.5 billion down 5.4 billion. Disposable personal income down 9.2 billion to 202.5. You see the trend here: personal savings down 22.4 billion to 809.2 uh, billion, and the personal savings down a percent. All those numbers, income, disposable income. Oh, we lost you a little bit, Kevin. You there? We'll see if we can get him. That was some great information. That's too bad we lost the end of that. You there, Kevin? The American consumer, man. We'll see if we can get him back. Um, I love how he digs into those numbers below the headline number that we get there. Maybe we'll see if my producer can get him back on the line. Uh, for those GDP numbers, and what are they talking about, right? They're talking about what? Consumers got less income, less disposable income to go with it. And how does that hit the market? Well, the Fed probably needs some of that, which is one way to look at um, how that goes. But we got a little bit of volatility on that 830 number. You dip below 110.05. We'll see if we can get him back on. That's too bad. Our man Kevin Hinks, we appreciate the time he gives us each morning when he jumps on the air. And don't forget about Fast Market. 
I'm sure, especially ahead of the PCE coming up tomorrow morning, which is the all-important number. You heard it referenced in that second revision of GDP, comes in at 3.2% for GDP. And yeah, some tough numbers for the American consumer in there, to put it lightly, man. As you get the NASDAQ slightly in the red, s and is off by 16, Dow off by 134, and the Russell right now off by 13. Okay, we jump around to what else we got going on in this market. How about TJ Maxx, man? This company has just been on an absolute tear, to put it lightly, man. TJX. Okay, so they're, they're, looks like the bar is pretty high, as even on some decent numbers, you trade higher, but they've given that back just since they came out with their numbers. Tops earnings estimates, but issues like guidance ahead of uncertain growth path. Well, you know, all things considered, folks, okay? How about this for a, a growth path? Going from 60 to 100, this thing's been on a one-way trip, man, in terms of off of the lows of May, and you gotta go back even further than that, because yeah, you had a lot of volatility in there, okay, there's your COVID volatility, there's your rate scare volatility, but take those two out of the equation for one second, and man, you got a pretty consistent 45 degree line to the upside, you start that acceleration basically, at the end of 2017 on TJ Maxx, man, and you were just accelerating higher. Everybody had some volatility in COVID. Uh, was that the taper tantrum maybe at the end of 2018? Is that what that was? Let's put it on there. Right, yeah, when you got that first, yeah. I mean, all uh, the only weakness on TJ Maxx's chart is when the market freaked out for macroeconomic reasons, right? COVID, taper tantrum, the Fed hikes to combat generational inflation. You take those volatility spikes to the downside out of this chart, and you are just like straight lift off to the upside, man. You jump over to the Analyze tab. I'm curious what, what kind of size of a company we're talking about at this point. $114 billion. There you go. Yeah. So they... Uh, Yeah, I want to get Miramax, Home Goods, TJ Maxx, and Marshall Chains. I love Marshalls, man. I do. Get some good discount stuff at Marshalls. Nonetheless, TJ Maxx, they're basically flat with a bid ask right around where they closed yesterday on some pretty strong numbers. A little bit of light guidance, but seems like the market's okay with it, even with the bar pretty sky high for TJ Maxx. All right, what else do we got to talk about? Yeah, this one's an interesting one here. No real huge reaction this morning. You got Disney and Reliance to merge media business in India. $8.5 billion joint venture. Now, it's always interesting. Disney's been talking about their hot star for a while, right, which has always been in India. And they don't make a lot of money. The margins on that, the average revenue per user, is way below what it is in something like the U.S. But nonetheless, you got Disney and Reliance. They're going to merge Announcing this morning, they're going to be combining their respective Star India and Viacom 18 units. Newly created Star India, $8.5 billion is what that's going to be valued at. And yeah, Ambani, he's going to control um, and put $1.4 billion into the growth strategy. 16.38% is going to be Reliance. That's, that's um, Ambani out there. 46.8% is going to be the Ambani's Viacom and 36.8. So they take a minority stake, but almost 37% in that. No reaction whatsoever, really, on Disney shares this morning, which is interesting. Uh, backing off with the market to 109 from 109.70 just yesterday. We'll see where we go from there. Yeah, how about natural gas, right? we got to talk a little bit about natural gas, man, just taking a look. Forgive me. Come on. It's evading me. Where are we? Uh, well, it's NG, right? There we go. So natural gas. There's your three-year weekly, man. Never think that things can't go lower or higher than you think they can, folks. Right? I mean, talk about back things up on a monthly basis. All-time lows of a buck forty-four. You just spiked to ten dollars during the year 2022. You drop off a cliff. And it looks like that maybe, that's a monthly basis, on a daily basis, 
even on a weekly. So yeah, the weekly basis, you know, a lot of support maybe in that $2 area. Boy, you just blew through that at 152, but we're up a bit, up five pennies. And yeah, if you're trading this, man, make sure you're using capital that you can probably risk to lose all of it when you're dealing with this type of volatility and commodities especially, folks, commodities especially. Now, we gotta talk a little bit of Bitcoin, all right? And we're gonna talk a little bit of Bitcoin when we get back after the break as well. We got about 45 seconds left in this segment. We jump over to Bitcoin. And what's so interesting here is, you know, I got a call last week, I think it was doing my dad's program, and we were talking about Bitto, okay? And we'll talk about some of these ETFs, folks, because boy, they are on the rise, but it is interesting in terms of whether it's Grayscale, Bitto, what is it, what's Fidelity's, FBTC. Um, we'll take a look at some of these when we get back. Bitcoin on the rise spot, Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, Bitcoin up $3,200. We're coming back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets open. You're looking at S&P, negative by 15 points, trading at 5,075. You see the rollover, right? Lowest made, as I referenced, about 5 a.m. Eastern time this morning. You jump to the low at about 8 a.m., 5,069, we'll call it, and you're just off by about 16 pennies. Uh, excuse me, 16 points. All things considered, folks, putting things back on a daily basis. 
we're just chopping around near all-time highs here, right? All-time highs made at 51.23. You get that huge acceleration six days ago, last Thursday, where you plow higher to 51.07. We continue that high the next day. That was on the acceleration of the NVIDIA earnings. Continue higher the next day. We're just chopping around. So, yeah, no huge sell-off here. But if you heard my interview with Tim Ward even yesterday, right? I mean, he's looking for... Even the SPY, maybe you're closing below 500, something like that, just for a little bit of health, a little bit of pullback, a little bit of a reasonable pull, pullback. Maybe you give buyers another reason to buy. Um, just from a common sense perspective, if something is parabolic, right, that's not usually a healthy run. And we're not parabolic right now, but it just brings to the common sense nature of why you want to see a little bit of health in this market when it comes to potentially a little bit of a pullback because the run has been extraordinary. And if you want to continue, you probably need a little bit of ease or at least consolidation to some degree as we approach these levels. I mean, you're talking about the SPY folks, was at 414, excuse me, 409 on October 27th. And you traded up to 510, we're sitting at 505. Pretty remarkable. All right, we talked about Bitcoin. Now, quite the run for Bitcoin, up. $3,290 today. You're pushing 61000 Now, here's what's so interesting about this whole industry, sector. Um, you got Bido, you got Grayscale out there, okay? These two ETFs are still charging extraordinary fees, especially compared with the spot Bitcoin ETF, okay? And what's even more remarkable, okay, is that the rollover contango risk that you subject yourself to by trading something like this, Bitto, okay? Now, this is the fact sheet for Bitto. It's from the ProShares website. I just clicked on it. This is as of December 31st, 2023. Okay, maybe they update them on a quarterly basis. The fee is 0.95%. I'm pretty sure it's pretty close to that. I'll look it up again, but if somebody in the den has it, I'm pretty sure they're still right at that number. And what I wanted to look at as well is where they place their holdings, okay? Their holdings are basically split 50-50 for the next two months out in futures. It's just another risk that you subject yourself to, okay? It doesn't mean that it's going to go bad. We've seen how contango and rollover risk in ETFs can go bad. Be aware that you're subjecting yourself to that when... Everybody knows that you got to roll those futures. Think about it, right? You got futures in the next two months. So right now, that's probably going to be March and April futures that a fund like this would have based on futures, not based on spot. Now, what just got approved is the spot, okay? And you got Grayscale, which was the huge leader. They transform their trust to an ETF. $7.4 billion dollars is what has been taken out of that fund in the first 30 trading days. Now, why has that happened? This article from a couple days ago, okay? Their fees are extraordinary. They had 2%, they dropped them to 1.5%, okay? A few different factors explain. GBTC, the largest, most active traded. 1.5 management fee, most expensive, okay? Many of the top tiers right now at about 0.2%. So you could trade an ETF with a 0.2% fee, versus an ETF with a 1.5% fee, but here's the kicker, okay? And look at the outflows that you have. And you can see that people immediately pull money out if you were gonna do it, because the fees itself, why subject yourself to the fees if you don't have to, okay? Seems like everybody who is gonna sell has probably sold, is what's going on right now for GBTC. Some of the other headlines out there is uh, some of the slowest outflows, I believe it was, is the headlines out there. Let's see if I can find it. Nonetheless, you get over to some of the fees that we're talking about. Okay, take a look at this article right now. You got Van Eck. I'm gonna blow this up so you can see it. Bitcoin Trust, that's the one that's total, 0.2%. They were at 0.25. This one just from February 26th as well, all right? You have the iShares Bitcoin Trust, IBIT. They have $6.5 billion in assets. They had an initial rate of 0.12% for the first $5 billion, okay, before increasing to 0.25%. So they're at 0.25%. Um, point being, 
you know, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which is now GBTC, the ETF, I believe, right? I'll have to, is that how it went? I have to make sure I get that and pull that up. Because basically their business plan is making sure that people don't sell because if you sell, you have to incur the taxes and the capital appreciation on it. So as a result, they lock you in, they keep the 1.5% fee. So don't get distracted by that. It's gonna be an anomaly in the industry. Everybody's gonna be going with the spot ETFs and uh, it's given quite a boost to Bitcoin and we're probably on our way to challenge those all time highs, man. It would make sense, right? There's there's definitely the, the, the meme factor in Bitcoin of all. And when you're this close to all time highs, man, with everything going on, you just traded from 40,000 to 60,000. You're within about 9,000 now of the all time highs. We're probably going to touch it. 70,000 on its way from Bitcoin. Pretty remarkable acceleration. Acceleration. All right. We got the markets trading a little bit lower right now. You got the S&Ps down 15. How about the Dow accelerating? We just hit 38,800. NASDAQ down about 80 points right now. You jump around to some of the equities. Apple shares down about two tenths. Microsoft basically flat this morning. You jump over to Meta shares up about six tenths. We keep our eye on Tesla. They're up nine tenths percent. Boeing shares down about four tenths percent right now. All right, we check out what else we have going on in this market. Let's check in on some of the equities that are coming out in terms of how they're reacting on the open. We had TJ Maxx market digesting their numbers, and yeah, basically flat, up by two tenths percent for TJ Maxx. We check back on crude as it continues higher. How about it? We're going to get $80, man. This will be good. we got about a minute and a half until the next break. We're coming back. We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad as we got crude pushing higher highs, man. Higher highs, higher lows. That's been the trend since the low of February 12th. We're at 79.26, which is literally within pennies of that high that was made on January 29th in the crude market. We jump over to gold. Gold backing off a bit, 2042. We keep our eye on yields on the heels of that in GDP data. Got a little bit of lower price and higher yield right now with the 10 years sitting basically at 4.3% as I pull it up. Yeah, about 4.3% the yield on the 10 year right now. As we got a little bit of higher price, uh, excuse me, lower price in this market as we await the important economic data, biggest one probably of the week tomorrow morning at 8.30. We'll see how today goes ahead of that data. All right, folks, S&P's in the red, market's in the red. Stay tuned. We'll be coming back, talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. We'll talk a little bit of Forex. We'll talk a little bit of crude, gold, yen. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We'll get the S&Ps in negative territory, off by about 13 points right now, trading at 5,076. You jump over to the dollar, just above that 104 price point, 104.03. We're as high as 104.24 this morning. To talk about some of the market action, we're going to jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, don't forget, you can check out Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report right under the newsletters tab. You can subscribe. It's $97 for the month. He's got new issues every Monday, folks. He's got issues throughout the week when warranted. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. It comes with an archive webinar that you have out there as well. And if you're into uh, candlesticks or you want to learn more about options as well, check out a couple of the great webinars he has under the services tab, talking about capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads and Japanese candlestick patterns, stock and option strategies. He's written a book on candlesticks. Uh, and we're going to talk some Forex, though, today. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, so we got a little bit of a chop in this market right now. We got the dollar um, at 104. Market's kind of chopping around just under the highs. We're red today, but man, it's been quite a positive market. Um, crude a little bit uh, higher. That's one thing that's moving. Where, where do you want to kick things off this morning, Teddy? Well, if you want to talk about any action, I think we have to talk about crude because as a whole, the uh, FX markets are going kind of flatline, and that's because rates are a flat line. I mean, if you look at the short and the long term uh, ends of the curve, nothing's really going anywhere. And if rates are a functional value of currency pricing, and since rates are going nowhere, currencies aren't, except for currencies like for potentially the US dollar yen relationship because of the crude uh, relationship. That's where I think we have a little story if you want to go on that one. You know, that's it. And I didn't even plan on it, but I, I remember the first time you started talking about this, even when I was doing the program with my dad and you were talking to us, right? And you were walking us through kind of the fundamental nature of whether you're a producer, um, a user, consumer, crude, and how that impacts in the great example that you give of kind of the dollar to the yen. If you could just walk listeners through that, Teddy, when you just make that reference, because I know not everybody kind of understands why. What happens with crude is going to impact whether it's the dollar and the yen and why so. Could you walk them through that? Because that's a great one, man. I remember the first sure. time you educated us on that. A absolutely. Okay, so and it's not that it's always a relationship, but it, there are times when it becomes one. Right now is the case. You have a, a look at Japan. They do not produce oil. They're a big industrial complex, so they use a lot of oil. Okay, so they have a demand for it. Oil is priced in dollars predominantly still across the globe. We are one of the biggest suppliers to Japan of oil. So <clears throat> that fundamental relationship becomes integrated in the pricing of dollar and yen relationship. Okay, So just how interest rates are a function of any currency depending on the central bank, 
oil becomes a factor when it comes to the U.S. dollar yen relationship. So the, the fact that not only are they importing, it's not just their demand, but the pricing impacts that currency relationship. So as oil breaks out to the upside, that happens to make the dollar more expensive, which makes the oil also more expensive. Okay, so it's a double-edged sword there, where you know it can it can accelerate a trend or it can decelerate a trend. In this case, with it doesn't matter. Right now, you have no fundamental dollar strength or weakness because interest rates are kind of going flatline. So that relationship is right, just going nowhere. But now you have the demand the demand function for dollars for and oil. That changes everything. So for the U.S. dollar crude relationship, excuse me, the U.S. dollar yen relationship, that makes it very bullish. And like especially right now, we're at that 150 critical threshold level for the uh, Bank of Japan. That's where this becomes very, very important because if crude was say six dollars lower, you know, and railing up towards 150 because of the of the price and oil appreciating, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But because we're above the 150 mark right now. That's a big deal because the central bank or the Bank of Japan does not want the U.S. dollar yen relationship to be above there. OK, so now we're going to see some uh, bank, uh, any type of interaction, you know, intervention by the Bank of Japan. I don't know. Let's see. But I think that especially right now with oil where it's at, we're breaking out to the upside like. You know, I, I had the 70 to 75 dollar range was it was holding for a good time. Now I think we're going to raise that range to about basically 80 to 84 dollars. You know, and if we get above 84 dollars, well, then we have a really big deal because then you could see the U.S. dollar yen if there's no BOJ intervention trading up at you know 153 to 154. And I'm not talking about like two months from now. I'm talking about like, you know, let's say crude rallies six seven bucks over the next week and a half. Well, then you'll see the U.S. dollar yen probably trading at 154, you know, within the net in that time frame, you know, and that's without any interest rate move. If if yields actually go up at the same time, like if you start to see that the 10 year and especially the short term start to hit the hammer, the lows, meaning yields go up simultaneously. Well, then for sure, I can't see how you would not see the U.S. dollar yen trading any at least 153 to 154, maybe even spiking up at 155. <clears throat> and that's a currency trade that you, I think is a very viable trade on the table right now because these markets are in play because everything else is going sideways. You know, I always say that the, the biggest indicators for the markets are the markets themselves. You know, I mean, if you want to use, you know, whatever mathematical formula, God bless you and I hope it works for you. But if you want real time, you know, indicators, look at the markets and there's a correlation between many of them. And that's the trade right there is the crude dollar yen trade. It's on. It's in play right now. It hasn't been in play for a while, but now with oil spiking to the upside and looking to where it really could hold a trend to the upside, and I'm not saying that we're going to go up to 100 bucks, 110 dollars anytime soon. But let's be real: <clears throat> higher highs and higher lows is what it's indicative of a bullish trend, right? For sure. And listen, that that was an awesome wrap up, man. For those that. You know, uh, there's so much good information. If you didn't understand it completely, because I had to hear it a couple times myself, folks, over the years, um, we archive everything we do. Every interview I have with Teddy, it'll be right on the TFNN YouTube page. Search it out because it is so cool, man. And I think a lot of us have gotten a real education in terms of how we've just had such big rallies and pullbacks in yields. And we've seen what that's done to the dollar and how those relationships move. But it's pretty cool the way you just explained it. And it was such a great job, man. So thank you. Thank you. Um, in how in the same way that just like we're going after yield with our currencies, right? You're using dollars to buy yield in America as it rises or whatever. You're using dollars to buy crude, which we're producing. And if you're in Japan, you're not producing, man. You're consuming it. So you have to take those yen, put them into dollars, and buy our crude. And that's and it exacerbates things, which is so cool. Um, yeah, and 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 you know, as I started off, I, I saw that we were just chopping around, man. Pretty interesting that that's 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 crude might be the story of eighty dollars and how that impacts things. Anything else you're watching ahead of the inflation data tomorrow? I know, boy, you've been calling it pretty well in terms of the Fed, where they are, where they may end up in terms of not cutting at least or potentially hikes. But um, you looking for for any of these surprises? How do you trade something like that, or do you? 
Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I think that you really have to watch out for the uh, ISM number on uh, Friday. I think that's important. Okay. So it's kind of be, you know, you know, it's tough when we're in sideways markets like this, you know, especially for the currencies, because they trend typically most of the time. You know, I mean, writing the Forex report right now is not an easy job when you have when you're saying like, sorry, guys, there's no trade on the table right now. You know, <laughs> I mean, sure. like, you know, and as a trader, like the, the, the hardest job really is, is not knowing um, when to trade. It's knowing when not to trade, you know, and, and you can't force it, you know, and that is something right now. It's just, you know, there's no opportunity. The opportunity will come. You just got to be patient, you know. Teddy, man, that I was so it. awesome. I appreciate you walking myself and the listeners through that explanation. I know a lot of people, I'm sure, really learned a lot. And uh, we appreciate the interview, the update, as always. And look forward to talking to you next week, man. Sounds good. Take care, Tommy. Thanks so much. Folks, check out that Tiger Forex report. You heard those relationships, man. It's awesome. Check it out. Uh, 30 Day Money Back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off about 20 points now as you continue to drop a little bit lower. We're now right where we were on the open, 5,070. Those are minute bars just to illustrate kind of the volatility. You spike up to 5,077 in the middle of that uh, first half hour of trading. We're back to the lows right where you were at about 8 a.m. and 7.15 as well. Back to a 15-minute chart. NASDAQ off 135. Dow off about 200 right now, 38,821. Amazon down about a tenth of a percent. We check in on Apple. Down about eight tenths percent. There you go. That'll drive everything lower, man. Apple shares 
they give back all of the uh, appreciation they got by dumping their car quests yesterday as you're back to basically where that thing opened yesterday. Apple off a of buck 43 so far. Yeah, so there's winners and losers out there. As in Meta, positive by two tenths percent right now. Google shares, they give it up though, off by 1.6 percent right now. The market looks a little bit skittish, man. You know, and you can't blame a market for being a little bit skittish with the runs that we just had, folks. Two consecutive 1,000 point rallies in the last 16 months or so. Keep that in mind as you look for a potential consolidation. Uh, wouldn't be out of the question, especially ahead of some important inflation data tomorrow. And speaking of important inflation data, this one's an interesting one. I'm going to post this one in the den. Uh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg's the best, man. Um, you know, Wall Street Journal, New York Times Business. Enjoy a lot of different news, but I do enjoy Bloomberg the most, I think. And they're talking about the big bond steepeners flopping as the Fed delays rate cuts. Swap traders now see the First cut coming in June. The yield curve remains inverted. Long rates are lower than shorter. And that was not supposed to be the case as things have recalibrated, you could say, on the Fed. Yeah. Such calls have backfired. Short-term yields went even further above long-term ones as a resilient economy and sticky inflation. Pretty remarkable. And you take a look at that chart. And that is the inversion, the two-year versus the 10-year. And yeah, still pretty inverted on that basis. We'll see where we go from there. Pretty remarkable. We get one of those economic data points tomorrow. And boy, hopefully we don't get a hot number, man. Chairman Powell, I say he's going to be sipping that coffee, man. We got a hot CPI, right? We need months of data for the Fed to be confident. And uh, we get an important data point tomorrow. And remember, those numbers they're looking for are pretty hot tomorrow. 0.4% on the headline and the core for PCE. Folks, thanks so much for kicking off your trading day right here. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's coming up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.